G'day, welcome to Nevadia. Today I'm showing an interview and bite model breakdown with my guest, Grumpy Old Dude, a former member of the World Church of the Creator, which is an atheist religion. We didn't mention this during the stream, and I know I'm going to get someone in the comments below saying, Aha! I told you atheism is a religion. It's not. This is an anomaly in atheism. Just like some people will point to the Westboro Baptist Church as an anomaly in Christianity, this church is definitely not representative of atheism. I will link an article below explaining perfectly as to why atheism is not a religion, but I won't go into it now because this is not what the video is about. And no, I won't be making a video on it because more than enough people have addressed this point. I mean, you can comment below telling me I'm wrong, I'm not going to stop you. Just don't expect a response from me. In this video, we broke down the B in the bite model, which is behavior control. Please check the description below for the other videos. And I do actually explain what the bite model is in the video, so just make sure you watch all the way through to it if you don't know what that is. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the interview. And for time's sake, I did have to cut a lot of the ums and ahs out of the video, so it looks a little bit edited. Don't worry, nothing was taken out of context or swapped around. It's essentially the same video, just minus the ums and the ahs. Anyway, I hope you have fun. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, this is Grumpy Old Dude, not Grumpy Old Dave. He's a totally different person. <laughs> Can you explain who you are? All right, well. As she said, I'm grumpy old dude. I am an atheist and anti-religionist, and my channel basically is more focused on hate groups because I am a former white supremacist. I was a member of the World Church of the Creator long, long time ago. I got into that organization while I was in prison for a involuntary homicide charge. Along with being in this religion, I was also a member of a skinhead prison gang, um, state prison skinheads in New Jersey. I was a skinhead for 20 years. Oh, and, wow. Yeah. And now you work mainly in trying to um, de-radicalize people. Yeah. Um, I'm hopefully going to be getting involved in a program with uh, Jeff Shope, who is the former head of the National Socialist Movement here in the States. He now has a program to bring people out of these alt-right racist groups. And we need that because the, they seem to yeah. be rising a lot. You were in a atheist cult, is that correct? Yes, or, it is. Yes. Okay, so we're going to do the bite model breakdown of this. I'm sorry, Telltale, for stealing your um, your your stuff <laughs> yeah so let's let's get into it why not okay uh so for those of you who don't know what the bite model is uh it is written or been devised by somebody called stephen hassan he is a world leader in cult and cult mindsets and he um wrote the bite model in regards to try and figure out like a bit of a checklist a bit of a um a way to figure out if something's a cult and of course not all members of a group are in a cult um, and it doesn't matter how big a cult is, it can be just two or three people, it could be millions of people. Also Stephen Hassan, he did a consecutive number just to say this is how much a cult is, so one to, one is less extreme than five. However, Telltale does not what I consider to be a better way of doing it because it requires more of a leap to get to the next level up. That's using the Fibonacci sequence of 2, 3, 5, 8, 13 and 21. So we're going to go through Telltale's idea of doing the Fibonacci sequence, um, if that's okay with you, Dave. Why do you keep calling me Dave? Sorry. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's so many days. You can call me Ed or you can call me Grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, it is late. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> but Ed is simpler than Dave. It's only two letters. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> sorry, mate. I'm so sorry. How many times have I called you Dave? Is it just the one? Just one? that one time. Okay. His name is Ed, everyone. His name is Ed. <laughs> oh God, I'm sorry. But All right, yeah, so we can we can do the Fibonacci sequence. That's awesome. Fine. Awesome. Okay. So um 
The first one is B, meaning behavior control. So I'm gonna, so let's get into it. Uh, regulate individuals' physical reality. Yeah, see that one, that one I struggle with because it could go as high as 21, but it depends on where your ranking is within the organization. I think I would still definitely go with 13. Because even if you're higher up, you are held to a standard as far as your diet, your, your workout routine, pretty much your, your whole daily life. It is a religion, but at the same time, they want you to have a soldier mindset, especially for males. And for females, they're held to a pretty st strict standard, too, you know, as far as diet and maintaining physical appearance you know, physical health, they push hard that they want you to work out, keep the perfect BMI and play the part of that uh, proverbial, you know, strong Aryan look. If you stray from that, don't smoke cigarettes, don't drink alcohol, you don't eat any meat or processed foods. Um, most of them are vegans. They eat all raw food and everything like that. If you don't follow along with these diets and exercise plans that they have in their holy books, you can be sanctioned. So can you give an example of like what what you went through? You know, you were talking about being BMI and stuff. What about your personal experience? When I was a member, it was still called the World Church of Creativity. and Which is an atheist group. Yes. Um, That's weird. <laughs> they do not believe in any gods or gods. They don't believe in heaven or hell. They don't believe that nature, you know, is in control of anything or the universe. They are an atheist group. When I first joined as a new member, it was you had the first 90 days, you had to do a strict workout regimen. And if you couldn't make it through that 90 day boot camp, then you weren't going to become a member of the church. You were going to have to start over. And so along with that, you, you had to try and change your diet. If you smoked, you had to quit smoking. You had to change your diet. You couldn't eat meat anymore. They would kind of give you a pass, especially for me because I was in prison when I joined. You can't get certain foods in prison. It You get what you get. Mm. So they would give you a pass on as far as eating cooked vegetables and things like that. But you had to change to a vegetarian diet. Uh, okay, so the next one is dictate where, how, and with whom the member lives and associates or isolates. Yeah, it, that is definitely top 21, okay. without a doubt. Again, while I was in prison, you kind of don't have much of a choice. You're mm. stuck living where they put you in the prison. For members that are, you know, in the public, though, if people in your family don't agree with your racial beliefs, you're to cut them off. You're not to have any contact with them. You're to shun them, whatever. They're considered a race traitor and an enemy. Wow. Um, yeah, it's like, and they're for real about it. If you get caught associating with people that are in mainstream religion, like Catholicism or Methodist or Baptist or whatever, you will be sanctioned. Like there, there will be consequences for, for doing that unless you are confronting them in some kind of protest or whatever. If you're not associating strictly with your race, there will be consequences. It's not going to be anything physical. Like they're not going to beat you or anything like that. But they will push you to work out harder. They will push you to read more books. They will make you spend money on their books and go pass them out for free. And you will have counseling sessions with higher ups in the religion to bring you back into the fold. You know, get those ideas out of your head that, oh, well, that guy's okay. I've known him for a long time and I know, you know, he's not completely white, but he's, he's a good person. That's definitely frowned upon. That is not going to fly. Oh, wow. 
It'd be interesting to find out if you, uh, how they'd react if they found out that you were like a quarter black or something like that. That's happened. Wow. And it did not end well. Um, <gasps> one of the people that was involved in the church while I was had a DNA test done and found out that his biological father was half Spanish. He was, he was half Puerto Rican. When this came out, he was immediately told you are no longer a member of this church. Do not contact us. Do not contact any of our members and oh, wow. you need to disappear or we will make you disappear. Wow. That's, that's incredible. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. They literally <laughs> threatened his life and told him, you know, you will no longer tell anyone you are, you are an active member of this church. We want nothing to do with you. Go away. Oh, wow. Did you end up catching up with him? I haven't heard from him probably in 15 years. I have no idea where he's at, what he's doing. I'd like to get in touch with him and let him know that I'm not in the church anymore. <laughs> Fair enough. Right. That's, that's crazy. All right. Going on to the next one. Uh, when, how, and with whom the member has sex? Oh, definitely 21. Yeah. Um, wow. Male and female. If you are with, again, if they're not white, then it's not, no, the, and don't get caught doing that because you you're looking at some serious repercussions. These people can be very, very violent. Um, well, it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah, the the leader of the church when I was in it was Matthew Hale. He is now serving forty years in a federal penitentiary for trying to have a federal judge executed. Ben Smith. Uh, another member, when I was a member, went on a shooting spree. It killed two people and injured nine others. And there's just countless other cases. Shooting at people from the press for trying to take mm. pictures of, the, of their compound. Bomb making, all kinds of things. If you were to be caught having sex with someone outside of the white race, I, I don't even want to think of how that would end. That would be bad. What about if it was like sexual violence? That starts with R. Yes. And trigger, that, warning, trigger warning, everyone. <laughs> yeah, th that will definitely, that would get you put in a grave. Um, they do not tolerate things like that. If it's a female that's in the church and you're married, again, like mainstream, well, I can't say mainstream religion, but like... um a lot of fundamentalist religions, women are supposed to obey their husbands. Mm. You know, you, you do what he says because well, you're his wife and that's the natural order of things outside of that. If you force yourself upon anybody, you're going to pay. You were no oh, longer wow. going to, yeah, you will not represent that church or the white race and have those kinds of charges. Okay, so they're very much against extramarital R. Yeah, or um, well, anything to do with children. Don't. Yeah, that is that is definitely not okay. Well, silver lining to every cloud, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I, I can agree with them on that point. I mean, that I will not tolerate people who do that, but it's for, for them, it's more of presenting an image. And if you're not going to live morally correct, you're not going to represent the white race period, especially not in their organization, even though they're really strict about it. I guess it is kind of, like you said, a silver lining. So, uh, number four, control types of clothing and hairstyles. No, no, not so much. Yeah, I, I guess I, I'd probably give them a two. The only time they really try and control anything like that is if you are really, really high up in the ranks. You're expected to dress conservatively, have a nice haircut, be presentable for the cameras. 
pretty much. Mm, but mm. other than that, it's like, yeah, nobody really cares. Yeah. Okay. So um, it's interesting how they care so much about their image and yet, you know, they're yeah. off lynching people. Yeah. <laughs> interesting that. All right. The next one is regulate diet, food and drink, hunger and slash or fasting. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, 13. 13? Um, yeah, that's that's pretty up there. It will go higher the higher up you are in the church, I should say. Mm -hmm. So I yeah, I don't know. Maybe we ought to maybe we ought to even bring that down a little lower. Um to an to an eight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's always best to go conservative. <coughs> the more conservative you are, like the numbers will show. And already we've got a couple of twenty ones. I would go with an eight with that because like I said, when you're first getting in, they're real hardcore about it. But then once you're in and you're you're kind of reading the books and you're going along with the religion, it kind of eases up a little bit. And once mm. you've once you've made a name for yourself, it's like, okay, well, we'll give you a pass on some stuff because we know everybody cheats on their diet. Not everybody works out every single day, but as long as you're still actively working out a couple of times a week and you're still healthy and maintaining a pretty good diet, we'll give you a pass. But again, when you're higher up in the church, you're supposed to set that example for everybody under you. So it gets a little bit more strict the higher up you go. We'll make that an eight then. The more conservative we are, like the numbers will still show. Uh, manipulation and deprivation of sleep. No. Um, yeah, I, I don't even know if I would want to even put that on there because they that's, you know, a key to maintaining your health is getting good mm. sleep and everything. So, yeah, they don't they don't really get into anything like that. So I, I guess Did we'll... They did they tell you like you had to be um go to sleep at this particular time or no no yeah, just as long as you got enough yeah it basically just get as much sleep as you feel your body needs but don't be slothful you know don't don't oversleep financial exploitation manipulation or dependence yeah we'll we'll give that an 8 your money is supposed to be you know, one, take care of your, your family, but whatever you have extra is supposed to be spent helping the church either print books or distribute books, get their information out there. You're not supposed to make money on these books, though. You're supposed to buy them and hand them out to try and recruit new members. Mm. And in the process, it builds up the bank account for the church. Yeah, I, I will look... Because of that, I would probably state that's more like a 21 because they're making you pay for your own indoctrination. I mean, at least the J-dubs, yeah. they give the stuff to the person. They, they don't have to pay for it. Yeah. Um, but and if you want to stay with, with an eight, then I'm happy with that. Well, I, yeah, maybe maybe we should go up. I was, I was going to add another part in to that um to be an active member in the church you have to pay membership dues otherwise you're just known as an associate you know you, they'll still call you a creator which is their mm. name for anybody following this religion but you won't be recognized on the books as a member of the church unless you're paying your your dues to the church on a yearly basis were they excessive or were they like a hundred bucks or something um at, well, I I don't know what they are now because they've mm. changed their name and everything. When I was in it, it was back in the in the nineties, and they didn't care if you were in prison or whatever. And guys in prison don't have a lot of money, so at the time, no, it was um, what uh, sixty five dollars a year. But I think for people on you know in in the mainstream society, it probably wouldn't have been that big of a deal. Yeah. I mean, if you have to pay dues, I see that more as a gang or a club or, you know, something hmm. like that. Um, would you be willing, what you originally had it as eight, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. Um, Maybe go up to 
Yeah, let's but, let's do thirteen on that. Yeah. Okay, I'm I'm happy with thirteen. As I said, if we if we're conservative, the numbers will not lie. Yeah, and, and like I said, if you couldn't afford this for whatever reason, if you couldn't afford books or whatever, you weren't really looked down upon for it, but you were encouraged, strongly encouraged to do that. That would help you move up in the church if you sold more books or bought more books. So number eight is restrict leisure, entertainment, or vacation time. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll go with an eight because mm -hmm. they don't really restrict your time so much or even, you know, where you go on vacation or anything like that. But there are certain things that you're told are not going to be acceptable. Like I said, drinking, you know, going to bars and clubs. No, it, mm. that's that's not going to happen. So you can't really do that. Yes. Yeah, as, as far as, you know, where or when you want to go on a vacation, they don't really care about that. It's just the things you do. You still have to maintain that creator mindset. You know, hmm. you have to still present yourself as a member of that church, even if you're on vacation time or whatever, you are always supposed to be a creator. Major time spent with group indoctrination and rituals and slash all self-indoctrination, including the Internet. As far as the Internet, I don't know. Um, you have to remember, I was I was a member of way back in the 1990s and early 2000s. I didn't internet, know, what's that? <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what the internet was until 2004. Uh, <laughs> like, I, I mean, I knew of it, but 2004 was the first time I had ever gotten online. I don't really know how they integrate that into the their organization now, but as far as, as reading the material all their holy books and everything else, spending time doing group things, definitely an eight. They do tell you there are certain things, especially if you're out in society. If you're in prison, there's different rules, of course, because you're in prison. You can't mm. go to certain meetings or whatever. But for those that were out in society, you had mandatory meetings at certain times of the year. You had to be there. Like I said, as far as the books, if you can't afford them, you're supposed to ask around and see if anybody has one. You're supposed to make sure you read every single holy book that they have, especially their three main ones. And these are all written by Ben Klassen, the original founder of the church. So there's nature's eternal religion. That's like the main focal book of their religion. It gives you your diet and how you're supposed to present yourself and take care of yourself physically and everything. Then there is another addition to that called salubrious living, which goes more in depth of what kinds of foods that you should be eating and, you know, how you should be working out and, how you should take care of your physical appearance and everything. And then they have what's called the white man's Bible, which is just full of all kinds of hateful things and pretty much teaches you how to be the perfect racist. That particular piece of um, publication would probably come under like hate speech. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all of them, actually. I mean, there are things in all three of those books that put down everybody besides the white race. Nature's eternal religion, you're almost expected to memorize that book. Certain things in there, you are expected to memorize. There are 16 commandments. You're supposed to know them off the top of your head. And it actually took me a long time to kind of get them out of my head to where I don't actually remember them verbatim anymore. But it, it mm, that's good. <laughs> it took me oh I would probably say about 12 years before I started forgetting them. You know, oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. That's that's heavy indoctrination there. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I, I would definitely go a little higher on it. Well, hmm. no, I'll, I'll still say eight because an eight. Yeah, because they don't care how long it takes you to do this. You're just expected to do it. If it takes you ten years, okay, whatever. It's you still did it, so hmm. we're okay with that. So, were there any rituals or anything? Group indoctrinational rituals. Well, you said they went yeah. and went to a meeting. Yeah, there were there were meetings for the church. The church it was originally set up to follow along like the Roman Empire. You know, they have their own senate. You know, things like that. They hold their own courts. Whatever. Four times a year, they would have a big meeting of all the church officials and everybody, and put to a vote whatever was on the table, where the church is going, what they want to be doing, where they want to spend their money. I guess if it, if you were higher in the ranks and stuff like that, you were to be there. Like there, there was no, hey, I can't make it to this one. No, you mm. had to be there. I'm sorry, I'm dying in hospital. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, guys in, in prison... There's a whole separate thing called the prison ministry. And you were expected, mm. at least where I was, we were expected once a month to have a quick little gathering and say what we're doing. If we've, you know, talked to any new prospects, you know, for members, what we're doing for any new members that we have, are we helping them work out, helping them with their diet, whatever. And those meetings were kind of mandatory if you had the same time to go out in the yard together then yeah you were expected to be there mm. so i don't know i guess an eight depending on circumstances yeah you could get yeah. S, but eight sounds good for me number 10 permission required for major decisions <sighs> Yes, I'd have to go on a five with that because, mm -hmm. again, they don't really care if you want to buy a new house or a car or whatever. Fine, go ahead. We don't really care about that as long as you're giving us our cut of your money. Yeah, <laughs> We don't really care what you do. So, hmm. As um, long as it's not with somebody who isn't white. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was going to say that if you want to get married, get married, just make sure your spouse is white. Other than that, we don't care. You could be a day over the legal age and go ahead and get married. We don't care. Okay. All right. So five? Yeah. Five, five sounds good. Number 11, uh, thoughts, feelings, and activities of self and others are reported to superiors. <sighs> Again, uh, I'll go with 13 be and because, again, it depends on where you are in this organization. Mm. The higher you are, the more you're going to get reported because you're, you're expected to lead by example. Even if you're just coming in and you know you're not doing your work out the way you're supposed to be doing it, but you lie to somebody and say, oh, yeah, you know, I, I did my 200 push-ups for today and whatever else. Jeez. Oh, yeah. Trust me, when when I say it was a workout routine, I personally, I was up to a point where I did a 1,000 push-ups a day, uh, 1,500 sit-ups a day, and 500 pull-ups a day. And that was every single day. That didn't include if I went jogging, lifted weights, or anything else on top of that. Wow. Yeah, that was seven days a week regardless. My days off from working out were just doing those things and not doing anything else. Normally, you're expected to work out anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour and a half a day. Okay. It's, right. it's kind of up to you how much you want to do or how little you want to do. As long as you're still working out and maintaining a good physical strength and appearance. Okay. Yeah. So, because I was just thinking, wow, if that's what you're expected, I'm like, no, that's a 21. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, that's not really expected for everybody. I did that just because, well, I was a nut. And <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. But yeah, if, if you don't though, and you get caught not working out, you get caught 
cheating on your diet too much, skipping workouts and everything like that, then you're going to have somebody standing over you, watching you for the next few days or whatever, and making you work out harder than you normally would. Mm. So, yeah, I guess go with an eight on that. An eight? What, a, yeah. what if there was an injury or something like that? No, you, yeah, if, if you're really hurt and you can't, you break your arm or, you know, break a bone or something like that, then yeah, they're going to give you a pass. But when you are healed, they're going to expect you to rehab, you know, and mm. Mm, get enough. back to okay. premium health or, or as much as you can. All right. So you said that one was an eight. Yeah. Number 12, rewards and punishments used to modify behaviors, both, both positive and negative. Yeah, definitely go with the 13 on that. If you are doing a lot of what they consider positive for the church, then yeah, you're going to get rewarded. You're going to move up in mm. the ranks. You're going to have more say about who's doing what. Again, if you get caught cheating on anything, you get caught, which I did. I got caught talking to people of other races because I was lifelong friends with them. I had known them literally my entire life and I would mm. still talk to them and I would have other creators coming up to me like you know why are you doing that why are you still talking to them like you know we're we're not gonna push you up we're not gonna mention you to higher ups in the church and I'm like whatever I don't care I'll stay mm. where I'm at I've known that person my entire life I'm not gonna quit talking to them and it caused an issue for a while but in the end, that's one of the things that got me out of this this horrendous freaking mindset. What about um, what you said earlier? If you got found out having sex with a person of the wrong race, yeah, you um, were, yeah, that you were out. You were immediately done. And and the fact that they threatened to kill someone because they found out that they were a quarter Spanish. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would. Would you consider that to be more of a 21? The or would, only, are you more comfortable with keeping it as a 13? Yeah, the only reason I want to keep it as, as a 13 is because, like, you know, people like me that would still talk to people of other races, they didn't automatically say, well, we're done with you now. Mm, and, okay. because the, and this went on for years. You know, I spent mm. 12 and a half years in prison and I talked to a friend of mine constantly, almost daily, the whole time we were in prison together. Mm. And they still kept kept me in in the church. So okay. I'll stick with a 13 on that. Stick with a 13. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Discourage individualism, encourage group think. Number 13. I, I'm going to go with the 13 on that too, because... Although they do push the whole group thing, you know, act as one church, they do still, to a certain extent, want you to be your individual self and focus on whatever, you know, really good traits you do have as an individual. For an example, I'm I'm a pretty half-decent artist. Um, I do a lot of drawing, painting, things like that. My sign back here is handmade. I did that oh, myself. Nice. They would push that. They would, you know, hey, you know, why don't you put your your art talents to work and, you know, draw some some stuff for our newsletter and things like that. So they do encourage your individual traits, but they encourage it for the church, I guess. Mm, yeah. You know, and like I said, the group thing, definitely they want you to act as, as one group, but still kind of maintain your own individuality. Number 14, impose rigid rules and regulations. Yeah, 21. I was about to say, <laughs> is that going to be a 21? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think we kind of already covered most of them. You know, yeah, no, so, so, sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, number 15, instill dependency and obedience. I See, I kind of struggle with that one because they don't really try and instill dependency so much. They, 
they don't want you to be dependent on the church. The church is actually dependent on its members, you know, making mm. them money. I'm going to have to say an eight on that one. Would they do something like um, make you feel guilty? Like, you know, sort of like we rely on you. So therefore, if you want us, you know, you need to. Is, do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, Cause... it it wasn't so much as guilt, though. It was more of they have a way of twisting things like when they were pushing their books, like we just did mm. another printing of nature's e eternal religion. We have, you know, 2,500 books that we need to distribute and your contributions towards buying books and getting them out there to the public would greatly advance the church and your support would be greatly appreciated. They don't really try and make you feel guilty. They try and make you feel like, oh, you know, I'm, you know, I'm doing the right thing if I go do this. I'm, I'm going to be a hero. Threaten to harm family and friends. That was number 16. <sighs> Is it, it, see, it, it really depends. I've never heard of them going, you know, making threats towards someone's family or friends that is an active member who is going along with the church. The only time that's ever happened is, and I can only speak for myself, is when I told them I'm done. I, mm. I don't want any more parts of this. You're wrong. Your pseudoscience is wrong. Your history is wrong. And I'm out. And then when I started changing my views and my thoughts and actually became an activist against racism, I started getting death threats. Mm. You know, they were, yeah, yeah. pushing hard. I, I haven't had one in quite a while. It's been a couple of months. Oh, congratulations. But, well, thank you. <laughs> it only took about 10 years. <laughs> I, I bet that makes you feel much better. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's the only time I've seen them threaten anybody's friends or family is when you you leave this organization and start speaking out against them. And then they want to start doing all that. You know, we're going to kill you. We're going to kill your family. And I just keep telling them the same thing. You know where I live. I'm not hiding. I mm. sent you a letter with my address on it. So. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so what what would you consider that to be? Um, I'd, I'd have to go pretty low on that. I'd have to go with two. The only thing they care about your family is if your family doesn't agree with their beliefs, don't talk to them. They don't really threaten anybody's family. Oh, uh, okay. This is going to be interesting. Uh, 17, force individuals who are or to be odd. Yeah, no. Um, again, that's, that's not accepted at all. So I, I don't know. I mean, do we have to give it a two or? Uh, if you want to give it a two, um, you can do it. Yeah. Yeah. As... I, I, yeah. Cause I don't even know if I put that in there. Cause that mm -hmm. that's, yeah, that's definitely not something they would engage in. Okay. Be but you did say earlier that um, if, a woman didn't want to, um, but the husband wanted to. Mm, yeah. Um, you see, that I don't know. I, I've never really heard any anything about that as far as the church. Like, they don't have any strict rules on, on that per se. Mm. Their rules on marriage are are actually not that bad. You're supposed to respect each other equally and mm. treat each other equally. So I don't know if that would be okay if a wife spoke up and said, hey, you know, he forced himself on me. Mm. I'm not sure how, th how that would turn out. Okay. So I, I'll keep it as a two. Yeah. Keep it as a two. Yeah. 18, encourage and engage in corporal punishment. Hmm. Um, I, yeah, I'd have to go on a two with that. As far as punishing someone, it's more about, okay, we're going to make you work out more. We're going to make you, you know, memorize this certain part of this book. 
you're going to write a paper on what this means. They don't really do corporal punishment. Yeah, they don't beat the crap out of you. No. Okay. Well, that's all of that for B in the bite model. So uh, grumpy old dude whose name is Ed, not Dave. <laughs> uh can you please let us know who you are again if you whatever you know shill yourself out mate shill yourself out okay um again i'm the grumpy old dude um my channel is mostly focused on hate groups i do have some other stuff in there i recently just did an interview with the rage that turned out pretty decent hopefully everybody will come check that out and i uh, one of my biggest videos, well, it, two of my biggest videos that everybody seemed to like, I actually did on a black racist group, the Hebrew, black Hebrew Israelites. I've and heard of them. Yeah, I actually just did a couple of videos on them, and I was blown away by some of their beliefs, but... <laughs> Then again, I used to be a white supremacist, so it shouldn't surprise me. Fair but enough. anyway, hopefully you guys will come check me out and enjoy some of my content and see where it goes. All righty. Well, if you don't know who I am, my name is Navadia. And anyway, uh, come check out my channel. But, you know, the chances are you're already on it. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you so much, um, Ed, for coming Thank you. On. And don't forget, don't give yourself the raw prawn. As you can see, in the B section of the bite model, there are enough 13s and 21s for this to be the beginnings of a cult. Not every point on the bite model is required to meet the criteria to be considered a cult. In fact, in some cases, it only needs to hit one or two points at a level high enough to be considered one. After being rounded off to the nearest number, the World Church of the Creator averages an 8 on the Fibonacci sequence, so on B alone it's pretty clear that we are looking at a cult. But we shall see in future episodes whether this will change, although I kinda doubt it. Anyway, have a lovely day, evening, night, whatever, and don't forget, don't give yourself the raw prawn. Also, I just want to say a very special thank you to my wonderful patrons, especially my $10 Redback Spider patrons, Aidan Furball, Lauren Hart, Mary Civitano, Ross Devereux, and Atheist Pasta. I also want to say a very special thank you to my $35 Irukandji patron, Osman Cometh. I really hope you enjoyed this, and I'm looking forward to showing you the rest of the model. <laughs>